Hi, this is Anita Hummel, the Global Trade Gal. Today I thought I'd lighten things up just a little bit because there's so many things that are happening now in the supply chain. I just got an email this week about how there's so many ships off the coast of California that can't get offloaded. So sometimes you feel like even if you can ship the products, they can't arrive within a timely manner or you can't even get a container at all. That, you know, your goods are stuck basically in um, a China factory or Vietnam factory. They're just stuck because there's no ship or no container to get anything out. So I thought I'd Lighten it up a bit because we can all use a little bit of humor. I recently wrote a blog entitled 26 Supply Chain and Other Jokes, Laughing Out Loud, LOL. I want to share with you some of my more favorite ones for the supply chain. So hopefully it'll put a little smile on your face or help you laugh. If lawyers are disbarred, clergymen defrocked, electricians should be delighted, cowboys deranged, dry cleaners depressed, and supply chain managers fulfilled. Why will someone say there are a billion stars in the sky? And you'll believe them. But if you tell an inventory manager there are 20 widgets, they'll say, count them. A priest, a soldier, and an engineer were scheduled to be executed during the French Revolution. Priest is brought up to the guillotine and lays down on the table. The executioner pulls the cord and the heavy blade descends and then shudders and stops. The executioner proclaims, This is a sign from God that we should spare the life of the priest. The crowd cheers with delight. Next, the soldier is brought up and laid down on the same table. The cord is pulled, and the blade again shudders to a halt in the exact same place. The executioner again proclaims, The grace of God is extended even to the soldier. He shall live. The crowd again bursts out and cheers. Next, the engineer is brought down and laid upon the same table. Looking up at the blade, he then points upward and says to the executioner, You know, if you just tighten that one bolt right there, then this thing will work after all. The United States Mint Office decided that they would try to save some money and that they would buy a coin machine from China. One day, the machine stopped working and an engineer was brought in to fix it. And the engineer said, I can't really understand this machine. I don't know how it works. Everything's in Chinese. I really don't understand how this coin machine works. In frustration, he screamed out. He says, I really don't understand this machine. It makes no sense. All operation managers are actually bilingual. They speak English and profanity. There were three Chinese friends who decided they wanted to immigrate to America. They were Chu, Bu, and Fu. They decided that they needed to make their name sound American. So Chu decided to become Chuck. Bu decided to become Buck. And Fu, well, he decided he better stay in China. Why do supply chain managers always wake up in the middle of the night with a cold sweat? They're having another logistical nightmare. In a Zen monastery in the mountains of China, an American manufacturer decided to go to the monastery for some reflection and meditation. When he was there, he had some questions about life in China that he was sure that Master Z could answer for him. The American found Master Z. And he looked at him and he said, Master Z, why does everyone say that the Chinese people all look the the same? He pauses for a moment and looks at the American manufacturer straight in the eyes and answers, I don't know. I'm not Master Z. The easiest way to find out what inventory is actually missing is just to place another purchase order. An employer advertises for a responsible employee. The job description says, for this buyer's position, we need to have someone who's responsible. An applicant replies and says, I'm the one you want because of my last job in procurement. Every time there was a problem, they said I was responsible. A procurement manager says to the manager, what do you like most? My new forecast? Or my inventory projections. The manager looks at all the Excel sheets and says, I like your sense of humor. 
A manufacturing plant was in trouble, and nobody knew why. So one day, the plant manager decided, I'm going to call in an expert to come in and fix the problem. The expert walks in, inspects the equipment, and within a minute, just takes out a chalk, marks one unit with an X, and then promptly leaves. The plant owner replaces the machine, and voila, everything is working great. A week later, he gets the bill, the expert's invoice, $5,000. The owner's outraged. How can it be $5,000 just from the market X with a piece of chalk on a machine? The plant owner writes a letter and complains and says, this is not right. This bill cannot be $5,000. I need to have an itemized bill to review these expenses. The expert obliges and sends him an itemized bill as follows. Chalk cost $1. X mark, $1. Knowing where to put the X, $4,998. What's the worst thing about manufacturing tabletops? It's counterproductive. How many supply chain planners does it take to change a light bulb? None. The light bulbs are late and not shipping. I wish COVID-19 had started in Las Vegas because... What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What do you get when you play a supply chain country song backwards? You get the revenue back, your margins back, and your on-time delivery back. If you are a supplier and nobody seems to care whether you're dead or alive, try missing a couple of deliveries. I recently had to sell my calculator manufacturing business because the numbers just were not adding up. What do you call a pleasing manufacturing. You say it is satisfactory. I decided to start a glass coffin manufacturing business. My banker asked me if I thought it would be successful. I replied to him that it remains to be seen. They asked how my job manufacturing nuts and bolts were going. I told them it was quite riveting. If Boeing was a spring mattress manufacturing company, They would name their spring mattress Bonging 747. We hope you've enjoyed some of these laughs. And if you'd like to read these jokes and read some more of them, I'll put a link below in this podcast so you can go to our blog on this. But we all need to be able to laugh every once in a while, especially during this time of the supply chain when things can sometimes be a little bit hairy and a little bit difficult. This is Anita, the Global Trade Gal, and thank you so much for listening. We hope you've enjoyed this podcast, and we'd love to hear from you, and we'd love to um, hear any of your comments, and uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and, and thank you so much for listening. This podcast is sponsored by Mindoro. We create, develop, and manufacture home decor and home furnishing products in Asia with a social conscience. We'd love to have you check out our blog at Mindoro.com and sign up for our newsletter. We'll put a link below in our description so you can easily go there. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please give us a thumbs up and leave us a review. This really helps. Thank you again for listening.